Hello my dear doctors, now next we are going to discuss about the development of diaphragm. Another very important topic for the central institutes. Development of diaphragm, remember diaphragm is actually developing from like four sources. Number one, diaphragm will be developing from your septum transversum. Septum transversum. And uh, septum transversum is the one which is actually going to form the central tendon of the diaphragm. It is the one which is going to form central tendon of the diaphragm. If you just recall, we have discussed about the septum transversum in detail during the general embryology, third week of general embryology. In third week of general embryology, I told you that the mesoderm, intra-embryonic mesoderm is divided into paraxial, intermediate and lateral plate. Lateral plate mesoderm is in turn divided into the somatopleuric and the splanchnopleuric. But what is going to happen in the most cranial part of the embryo, the somato and splanchnopleuric lateral plate mesoderm is not differentiated. That undifferentiated lateral plate mesoderm, septum transversum. So we have discussed it in very detail during the third week of you know general embryology development. So there you can see what are the other derivatives from septum transversum also. But right now let us focus only on diaphragm. Central tendon of diaphragm is derived from septum transversum. Number two. If the central tendon is derived from septum transversum, then what about the muscular part of the diaphragm? Diaphragm is like muscular tendinous structure, you also have muscle. So muscular part is actually derived from the cervical myotomes. Cervical myotomes. And uh, cervical myotomes, they are the one which are actually going to form the muscles. The muscular part of the diaphragm. The muscle part, okay. But the important thing here, first of all, uh, myotome, nothing but the mesoderm only, right? So, therefore, we can even call it as like, you know, body wall mesoderm. Body wall mesoderm. So, please do not get confused if these kind of different, different words are used in the exam. So, body wall mesoderm or nothing but the cervical myotomes are the one which are going to form the muscular part. But my intention, my focus here will be on this word that is your cervical. I want you to keep your focus on cervical word. Why? Because most of the students when they are learning about development of the diaphragm here, they will be thinking how come cervical myotomes contribute over here. It is very simple how to remember what is the nerve supplying to diaphragm? The nerve supplying to diaphragm will be the phrenic nerve and what is the origin of the phrenic nerve? It is going to begin from C3, C4 and C5 and that will give you a hint. Yes, cervical myotomes are contributing. So, cervical myotomes are the one which are going to form muscular part. Welcome to the third one here. The third one will be the dorsal mesoesophagus dorsal mesoesophagus now what is this dorsal mesoesophagus guys nothing but the mesentery only the mesentery you know the mesentery of the esophagus so instead of writing dorsal mesoesophagus sometimes you can even see somewhere as dorsal mesentery of esophagus one and the same thing now the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus it is the one which is going to form the crust the right and left crust of the diaphragm that is derived from the dorsal mesoesophagus. And now welcome to the most important one for your exams that is the pleuroperitoneal membrane. Even the pleuroperitoneal membrane that is also the one which is going to contribute for the formation of diaphragm. So there are four structures which are contributing for the formation of diaphragm. Number one, septum transversum. Number two, the cervical myotomes. Number three, the dorsal mesoesophagus. And number four will be the pleuroperitoneal membrane and that too it will be paired. It will be present on both the sides, right and left side. Paired pleuroperitoneal membrane. Okay. Now, let us discuss a little bit in detail about this pleuroperitoneal membrane. Many questions are coming from here. First of all, guys, you imagine this one to be the trunk and in the trunk above you will be having the pleural cavity and below you will be having the peritoneal cavity. And a pleural and peritoneal cavity. Now, what is going to happen? There will be one invagination formed here. And because of this, it becomes something like this here. So, between the pleural cavity and the peritoneal cavity, now, because of that invagination, what is going to happen? Only a canal is there. And that canal is actually referred to as pleuroperitoneal canal. Let me write down here. This one will be actually the pleuroperitoneal canal. Pleuroperitoneal canal, guys. Fine. And finally, what is going to happen here, this is going to fuse together and once it is fused together, 
then it will lead to the formation of that membrane in the middle and that membrane is nothing but the pleuroperitoneal membrane. I will just write down in short as pleuroperitoneal membrane, fine. Now the main important thing which I wanted to actually teach you here is that sometimes what will happen is normally what should happen the pleuroperitoneal canal should be closed, it should be fused and the pleuroperitoneal canal should be closed actually. But sometimes what will happen this pleuroperitoneal canal will persist and if this persists then what is going to happen there will be absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane, absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane, pleuroperitoneal membrane is not formed there and that condition is nothing but congenital diaphragmatic hernia, very 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 much important. Many a times this question has been asked in your exams, okay, congenital diaphragmatic hernia and in this what is going to happen? All the contents in the abdomen because the diaphragm is not formed properly, the pleuroperitoneal canal is still persisting, the structures present in the abdomen are going to herniate into the thorax. Why? Because during development the pressure in the abdomen will be more. So, these structures are going to herniate into the, into the thorax and they are going to compress the lung, there will be lung hypoplasia and all those, whatever. Here in embryology, my most important thing is, what is the reason for congenital diaphragmatic hernia? The reason for congenital diaphragmatic hernia is absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane. Pleuroperitoneal membrane is not at all formed there. Now, sometimes what is going to happen here is that pleuroperitoneal membrane is formed, but the problem is that it is very much thin. There will be thin pleuroperitoneal membrane. And when the pleuroperitoneal membrane is very thin, what is going to happen? There will be evertration of the diaphragm. So, it will lead to a condition that is known as evertration of diaphragm. Even this has been tested in your exam. It will lead to evertration of diaphragm. So, because of that thin pleuroperitoneal membrane, there will be evertration of the diaphragm. Guys. So, these two conditions you have to be like very clear. I repeat once more. If it is like very thin, it will lead to evertration of diaphragm. If it is not at all formed there, absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane, then it will lead to what sir? Congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Now, apart from learning theoretically, I want you to do one thing here, draw a diagram along with me. Why? Because in the recent AIMS exam, they have even asked about the image based question based on the development of diaphragm. There was an image based question based on development of diaphragm. So, we are going to draw the diagram of diaphragm as if we, we are seeing from above. So, when you see from above, for example, if this one is your developing diaphragm here, if this one is the developing diaphragm there guys there will be septum transversum here and septum transversum is the one which is going to form the central tendon of the diaphragm. Then somewhere here you will be actually having the dorsal mesoesophagus. So, this one here will be the dorsal mesentery of esophagus. And then this part here, cervical myotomes or else I told you the body wall mesoderm. So, this one here is, here is nothing but the body wall mesoderm and whatever is left out in the middle here, this is nothing but the pleuroperitoneal membrane and this one here is the pleuroperitoneal membrane guys, perfectly done. So, that was image given in your AIMS exam. So, be ready. So, there was an image based question also plus as well as there was a question based on the clinical correlation of that that is nothing but the congenital diaphragmatic hernia as well as the evertation of diaphragm and then obviously it is developing from the four structures that I said you sir. So, that is all about the development of diaphragm done. Thank you.